Hello guys, today I'm gonna give you a quick guide how to install um, the our floating gear. I did a review about a years ago um, about our uh, floating gear. And anyway, this is our last generation and uh, they have a different ratio, 3.7, 4.1 and 3.5 and right here. So before we get started, you have to understand one thing. Every chassis, it is have slightly little different because it's a plastic. So, um, in order to make your floating gear or either even standard gear to be uh, successfully uh, installed perfectly, like a binding, you have to make sure um, you, you know how to adjust those gaps, okay? It's very small amount you have to adjust in every single chassis because every single chassis was different, okay? First, make sure um, do not use the stock, um, the counter gear shaft, which is this one right here. And make sure you use the upgraded one, which is item number 15390 with the flooring coated gear shaft, which is this one right here. So when you open the package and it comes with four um, roller spacer, which is right here, a pair of the counter gear with um, customer modify with two of the AO520 bearing on each gear, okay? And um, let's move to the next. Let's first get the upgrade, the gear shaft, which is right here. Um, you have to know, uh, my floating gear is designed for, um, suppose you put a two uh, roller space on the back, which is one and a two right here, okay? So this two roller spacer, when you put it back, it's for filling the back, the, uh, the space on the back, okay? Because take a detailed look at it. And then after we um, insert two AO520, it's become like this, and this is the original one, which is like this, okay? So it's have a little bit of sh uh, shallow design, like this, okay? That's why you need a two uh, roller space on the back to fill up the space. Okay, then let's put on the chassis first, like this, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the next one. Okay, I just put the two, um, my floating gear on the chassis, like this. Next, that's a very important part that most people, they fail. You have to look at a gap. And a gap, actually, we're talking about the gap between the counter gear to the chassis. Let me tell you something. If you look at the, the floating gear or either standard gear when you put on it, if you look at it, if you want to see um, if the gap is correct, you have to look at this part right here. See that little gap right here? This one right here? So you have to um, uh, take a look at this part right here. Make sure this is on the uh, correct amount of like it's right about there almost almost touching So it's like this right about there almost touching the this part right here So it only give you like a very very fine gap right here And let's take a look at the other side the the front part. See this gap right here is too big Okay, let me give you take a look at it, this one. That's what I'm telling you every chassis is different even they are made in the uh, same um, no matter how you swap it, you will notice sometimes the front gap is maybe it is okay and the rear gap is too big. So that's why that's how you adjust it. So you have to make sure it's really have very, very tiny gap like this. Um, I don't know how to tell like how big it is, but uh, once you do, you keep keep adjusting, you will know what's the, you know, the correct size for it. So uh, I'm uh, out of my personal opinion, this part right here is too big right here. Okay, so it's a little bit big. I should adjust like make it smaller. Okay, so let me let me tell you um, what's different when it is like a big and a small. Okay, let me put a motor on, and let me put a the motor cap on. Okay. Let me put two battery. You will hear something like this. It's a crazy. It, that's because the front gap is not correct. That's why I'm making this kind of noise. Okay. Um, also, let me tell you this. Let me open it. Remove the motor. So when I spin my wheel, you will realize it's nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. And same as the front. See? It is really pre precise. But why it's making that noise? That's because the this side of the counter gear is making too much contact with the painting gear right here. 
Okay, so remember I told you the front gap is like too much. That's why I make that noise. So let me take that front off and uh, put uh, the model back. And we're only gonna keep the real one. Let's see the sound will make a difference. Okay, so let's do this. So see, it's quiet. It's quiet, no force trading, smooth, okay? Especially when you like press it, nothing happens, see that? Okay, except I didn't put any grease on it. It sounds like a little bit weird, but, I, but it is smooth, okay? Okay, so how can we fix that issue? Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, you only have to, you have two options. Uh, first option, um, on one of the the roller spacer, make sure you remove a little bit. Um, you can get a piece of sandpaper. Okay, I have a piece of sandpaper. Uh, make sure it's like at least like a thousand uh, numbers. Then next, we're gonna set up the sandpaper on a aluminum setting board. And make sure you're starting to sand it, make it a little bit slimmer, okay? I think the best way using a tweezer and hold both ends of the spacer and starting to move like left and right, left and right like this. So it's starting, it was starting to slowly uh, grind off the, um, the size. So let me give you guys take a look at it. So right now, you can take a look at it. It is sand off a little bit already. So let me just go ahead and um, put this one back. Okay. So right now you can see um, my gap right here is getting smaller. So uh, that's a good sign. And um, if it's still making noise, just keep making it uh, slightly smaller. Okay, let me put it back. And by the way, I didn't put any grease on my gear. So it might sound a little bit weird, but it, it, it you can tell it's smooth. See? See that? Right now it looks much better right now. There's no any force training sound, no weird sound at all. Especially, I didn't put any grease at all, okay? Okay, like this. So as you can see, there's no any grease at all. If I put a grease on it and I start it breaking, you will, you will realize the sound's getting better, 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 and the quiet, quiet, more quiet later. And this is the first option you have, which is right here. Okay, just send off. Uh, one of space to make it slightly smaller than the other one. I mean the sickness make it like uh, slimmer Okay, another option you have So if you open any Tamiya model or any kind of model, there's a wide uh, spacer right here, which is like looks, looks like some PVC or either uh, during um, style mo uh, like space which looks like this the white scene and you can use that Okay, those are I think is a very perfect for adjust you know the gap between the gear to gear because this thing first thing is really small you can find really fine adjust you know um to the size you want it and another good thing about this thing it is perfect fit to here and uh, there's no loose it also lock the uh original the uh, uh roller spacer on the gear shaft like this so I'm probably gonna put a three. Um, I just put a one right here. Normally, uh, my experience, you need a three. Okay, so I just gonna get another three right here. Um, I have another two ready, which are one, two, and the plus the the first one I just put on like earlier. So there's three right here. So let's take a look at it. So see, it locked it locked the whole um, the gear on the shaft. Okay. So let's put it back. Okay, you will see it also has a perfect gap right here, okay? Um, so again, if you hear some noise, like a really force trading, it, um, but your counter gear spin fine without a motor, which means um, you have to adjust the gear, um, the counter gear gap, like the three way I did, um, okay? Okay. So I hear from a little bit, slightly a little bit frustrating, um, but not too much. Um, it, it could have possible because like a, one of us, um, the model spacer maybe I have to, um, yeah, it looks fine. Never mind. It should be, I didn't put a, like too much grease on it. Okay. 
Okay, now you did. See, you know, four feet off. When I push the suspension system, no any force trading. Okay. So again, it might, it might sound a little bit weird. I told you guys I didn't put any grease on the, on the transmission system. It, it is because if you put on it, it's, it's gonna be making a slightly different uh, because I wanna show you the original, how it is looks like. And especially without putting grease, it's already smooth like this. After you put a grease, it's gonna be more smooth, okay? So anyway, this is how you adjust your counter gear. Um, no matter uh, it is stock or no matter it is like a floating gear, okay? Normally, um, the stock counter gear don't really have too many issues. And because this part right here is always kind of loose, so it should uh, not have any issue. But uh, the only problem it is like, um, let me give you an example. Uh, the only problem it is, so the only problem it is like, um, uh, when you're using floating gear, you will notice the gear spin super straight let's take a look at the front one again see okay see the gear really straight okay oh by the way i didn't break in uh my uh, ao620 so it's kind of spinning slow okay it's not my um and plus i didn't add any oil on my uh ao520 so that's why it's spinning a little bit weird okay so let's put the original like the non-modified counter gear you will notice you will notice when spin it's a little bit waggle like this see that but look at uh, the floating counter gear it's spin really straight okay so okay so this is how you set up so most of the time you ha you have some like crazy noise uh it is it is always the problem between the uh, penny gear and the counter gear when they biting they maybe bind like a too tight you have to make it slightly right about there not too loose not too loose but they have to be right about there this is the hardest part so it's requires some experience so that's why um you keep playing with it long for a long time uh like you have more experience you will know what's wrong with it Okay, before end of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, clean, uh, give you a first time to clean my um, brand new counter gear, the floating counter gear, and make sure, cause, because you know, the brand new uh, AO520 um, have a little bit of grease on it, so after um, you wash it, it should be spinning like really crazy, like the one, let me show you, see like this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead right now, put it back on chassis and uh, show you the result. Okay, but uh, um, normally I don't really wash too much um, on my 620. So sometimes 620 is a little bit weird. Um, so okay, after I clean, my first time clean um, the 520, just add, gonna add some uh, Tamiya um, bearing a loop can. Okay, like this from the back. This is for maintenance, okay. Make sure you always have to put a, um, the uh, bearing loop can because after you wash on a zip life flow or either any kind of like a electric, electronic cleaner, um, it will it will last all the, um, the original loop can, okay. So after this, just gonna put it back everything, okay, like this, okay. So let me show you. Okay, so it's starting to spin uh, good again. Okay, let me put it up front. And we have the modify the space on the back. Okay, so we're gonna do it like this. Okay, and after finish, we're gonna put a little bit of loop again on the shaft as well. Okay, like this. Okay, then we're gonna put a, the motor back. Okay, this time, we're gonna add a grease. Okay, just gonna use the standard mini four-wheel drive at the 
gear, the plastic gear grease. Okay, you even can use stock grease, doesn't really matter. Those are for um, keep their like, you know, um, how to say that, um, maintenance actually. Uh, because if you don't put on it, it could be damaged the gear because there's um, there's no lubricant. So when they when the plastic contact plastic without lubricant, they normally they're gonna be kind of like uh, hitting each other. Okay, so let me put the, the grease and put it back like this. Right here it's kind of it sounds pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead put the back the battery right now is really quiet and it takes some time and this is wrong like for like five minutes keeps breaking and after 10 minutes it should be after i mean five to ten minutes should be super quiet again okay you can hear there's no full trading sound and everything's smooth okay you can feel it's strong you can feel the transmission is strong and in the, the gear there's no force trading okay because if you he, if you have something wrong you're gonna hear click click like that sound or either something like a crazy noise like a, something like a, like a force trading making like a huge like a, i don't know how to say that but uh, you will know okay so okay here's today's video uh we see you next time